بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على أهل بيت نبيك وعزته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهما السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره في هذا الشهر العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم Some of you heard about the tragic incident that took place in Masjid al-Imam al-Sadiq in the state of Kuwait during the Friday prayers while over 2,000 people gathered on Friday today to offer their Friday prayers, a Saudi citizen enters the mosque at the last rak'ah and he detonates himself and he kills 26 people the highest number in the history of Kuwait so far 26 people were killed and over 200 were wounded many of them are in the hospitals and I personally know many of the, these victims this is a few weeks ago You've heard about what happened in, in the eastern province of Saudi Arabia. Again, two mosques were attacked during the Friday prayers. Before that, many times some of the masajid in Yemen and Sana'a and other cities were attacked either by a suicide bomber during the Friday prayers or by Saudi airplanes while people were playing, praying inside them. And these, I think these attacks will continue since the source of evil, the source of destruction is still there and enjoys the support of many governments, regional governments and international governments, then we have to expect these attacks, unfortunately, to continue. I have three points to mention here today to share with you as a solution to what we are, the atrocities that are being committed against men, women, children, innocent people, worshippers who are going about their daily life. They are going, they do tathir, wudu, they go to the masjid on a Friday to listen to the sermon, to improve themselves, to unite with each other, and all of a sudden someone comes and he considers this as a temple of shirk. The statement issued by ISIS, it says, Hada ma'badun shirki. A temple of shirk, people who face the qibla, 
and say Allahu Akbar and they say La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. They are considered by ISIS and the masterminds of ISIS, which is the Wahhabi ulama of Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states, they are considered mushrikeen. Three points. Number one, all Muslims should condemn this, in particular the Sunni scholars. Sunni scholars are silent on this. I speak with many of them. Many of them are my friends. We have personal friendship here in Southern California, in America, internationally. They are reluctant to condemn these atrocities. Why? Because it is not happening in their vicinities, in their backyard. Once it happens, it becomes a crime. But if others are paying the price, even though the others are Muslims, they, they, they don't care about that. So ulama al muslimin ulama al-sunnah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, As-sakitu an al-haqqi shaytanun akhras. He's a Satan. The one who does not condemn these atrocities. So it has to be condemned, number one. And their job is to guide Hidayah and Irshad. What is the job of a alim? What is his main job? To teach, to guide, to speak the truth. The job of a diplomat is to act diplomatically. But the job of the alim is not to act diplomatically, is to be frank and open and straightforward and he should speak the truth. They don't speak the truth. Because they work, unfortunately. Their sustenance and their risk, they think that the risk comes from this government. From this community, if I speak up, I'm going to lose my, my job. He's losing his faith, his iman, his conscience, that's okay. But to lose my job, this is dangerous for me. This is how they think. They have to change that. They have to change that. iman, the weakest level of faith is to condemn. The weakest, at least with your heart. Say, I don't accept these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold them accountable. The ulama who refuse to speak the truth and guide the masses and teach people what is right and what is wrong, they will be held accountable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they have to teach the masses. They have to teach the young generation. This young generation is under illusion that they are doing jihad. They are getting close to Allah in the month of Ramadan. Abu Fulan al-Adnani, two, two days ago, he issued a statement, the spokesperson of ISIS. He called upon his followers, he called upon his followers to increase their attacks against the Shias during the month of Ramadan. During the month of Ramadan. What type of Islam is this? What type of religion is this? that encourages the young ones to go, to go and kill those who say La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So this is point number one. Ulama, they have to speak up. The second point, we the Muslims have to unite. We have a common enemy. ISIS are not only they dislike the Shia or they pose a danger only for the Shia. ISIS, they pose a danger for the Sunnis too. For the Sunnis too. For all good Muslims who do not follow their twisted ideology. So we have to get together. This is a saratan, a cancer. A cancer in the heart of the Muslim Ummah. We have to eradicate we have to get together. We should not just stop there and watch what is happening. We have to work together. And the best remedy to counter ISIS and their twisted ideology is to be united for the Muslims, the Shias, the Sunnis to be united together, to respect each other. We are all facing this danger. Today the Shias are paying the price, 
Tomorrow the Sunnis will pay the same price. Even worse. We have no way, no other solution that comes to my mind except unity, respecting each other, getting closer to each other, especially during these holy times, the month of Ramadan, the month of unity, the month of togetherness. وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرُّوا ISIS is strong, not because they are strong, because we, the Muslims, are weak. If we get together, if we defend each other, if we stand for each other, ISIS is going to be eradicated. This is number two. Number three, the United States of America and the American Congress is also responsible for these atrocities because they stand with dictator regimes in the region. They support a regime like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabian regime, he knows about these atrocities. He encourages them. And some members in the Saudi government, they finance ISIS and Al-Qaeda. They finance them. Not only in Saudi Arabia, in some of the Gulf states. And the United States, they know this. Because of economy, because of oil, they consider Saudi Arabia their closest allies. A corrupt regime. Most of those terrorists who come, whether it's ISIS, whether it is Taliban, whether it is Al-Qaeda, whether it is Boko Haram, this is twisted thought, twisted ideology, stems from Saudi Arabia by Saudi scholars, Wahhabi scholars. My friends, just two days ago, I was watching a Wahhabi scholar on the air, live on the air. He would say that Shias are not Muslims, they are Mushrikeen. يعبدون علي والحسن والحسين. We worship Ali and Hassan and Hussein. We worship them. How many Shia you know that they worship Ali and Hassan and Hussein? We consider Ali and Hassan and Hussein and Al Bayt and the Prophet himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to be the the true servants, the true slaves of God, the true slaves of God. In our masajid, the first thing we say, La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. In a broad daylight. Today, this is not 20 years ago, today. He says, those are mushrik. We don't consider them. And the guy, the anchor, he's trying to correct him. He tells him, no, the Shias. I, he says, no, 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 you don't know them. They worship Ali and Hassan and Hussein in Saudi Arabia. On television, live. On television. Can he say something about the Jews? No. Because there is anti-Semitism there. But when it comes to Shia, rhetoric against the Shia, he's a free. We have to wake up. These things divide the Muslims. These things weaken the Islamic Ummah. These, this type of rhetoric provides the ground legitimacy for ISIS, for Al-Qaeda, to wreak havoc and to kill the Muslims during the month of Ramadan. This has to stop. And the United States of America is responsible for these atrocities, for siding with those corrupt regimes. Look at what America is doing, helping Saudis to bomb the Yemenis during the month of Ramadan. Civilians. Every single day there are civilians who are being killed. Men, women, children, in mosques, in marketplaces, in schools, in hospitals, by Saudi jet fighters. And America is helping them. America is responsible. The Congress is responsible for that. They are responsible. And we have to change. We have to put pressure. We have to say, this is bull. Stop your aggression. We have to support the Muslim, whether the Muslim is Muslim, Shia, Sunni, non-Muslim, believer, non-believer. We have to side with the Muslim, with the wrong, with the one who has been abused. And we have to stand with the aggressor, the Balin, even if the Talib says, I'm a Muslim country. Since he's Talib, he's aggressor. Allah says in the Quran, Do not side with the corrupts, with the wrongdoers. Don't side with them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring healing to those who are wounded today in this heinous attack against the Mu'mineen in Kuwait. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring healing 
to the heart of the Muslim Ummah, inshallah, and to bring an end to the misery of the people of Yemen, the people of Syria, the people of Palestine, all the Muslims, all the non-Muslims who are suffering, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring them victory, inshallah, bring them healing, and bring unity to the heart of the Muslims, inshallah. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين على الخير والبر والصلاح والتقوى يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم تقبل صلاتنا وصيامنا وطاعتنا في هذا الشهر العظيم اجعلنا من عتقائك من النار وأدخلنا الجنة وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء تواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد